Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Just In Time Cafe. I'm Tracy O'Rourke, and I will be your moderator today. Today's webinar is titled, How the Shingle Model Will Revolutionize Your Culture, presented by Carlos Cruz. Hello, Carlos, and welcome to the cafe. How are you doing today? Fine, Tracy, doing great. Excited to be here and uh, ready to, uh, to rock and roll with this uh, presentation today. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Before we get started, I'll tell everyone a little bit about you. So Carlos has over 30 years of combined experience in manufacturing, healthcare, technology, financial banking. He's also an, an accomplished transformational visionary with a strong passion for operational excellence. Like me, I have a strong passion for operational excellence. As a matter of fact, many of us do, don't we? Uh, currently, Carlos is the CEO and founder of The Guiding Principles, a nonprofit organization known for high integrity and authentic leadership. His goal is to improve the customer experience by developing leaders and employees to build more substantial, more adaptive, and sustainable organizations. Very important. And finally, Mr. Cruz has a bachelor's and master's degree in computer science with certifications in Lean, Six Sigma, project management, and change management. And he is also licensed and certified Shingo affiliate and an alumni of the Shingo Institute, which is a very important part because of our topic for today. Right, Carlos? Correct. Uh, just And you are also fluent in Spanish. Is that correct? Spanish and Portuguese as well. All right. All right. Before we begin, just a few housekeeping notes. You can ask questions anytime by entering them into the chat window, or if you have any comments that you would like to see for the entire audience, please be sure to put in the two part panelists and attendees so everyone can see, unless of course you have just a question for Carlos or myself. We welcome your participation. Carlos is gonna ask you some questions throughout the session. And again, these webinars are recorded and are available for free on the Just In Time Cafe website. And so just in case, because a lot of people do ask us that, they always want to see the slides for free. Uh, and so please join us for our first activity. Share, where are you from? All, uh, many of you have already started doing that. We really appreciate that. We like to see where people are coming in from and how late you might be up in the world. Uh, so go ahead and type it in the chat window and let's just see what we have here. So Cindy Young is here. Hi, Cindy. How are you? We also have Minaj from the UK. We also have Jared from Issaquah. Did I say that right? I think I did. Um, and so we have a few other people saying hello. People from Chesapeake, Virginia, Dayton, Ohio, Mary from Lawrence, Kansas. Thank you so much for coming. And um, we're going to go ahead and let you take it away, Carlos. Thank you very much, Tracy. Well, welcome everyone. And I hope that uh, after this presentation, we're able to answer many questions that you may have regarding the, the shingle model. And uh, to start off, um, we were talking about how the shingle model of timeless pr principles drive sustainable organizational excellence and reshape the organ operational culture, which is very important. Uh, for many people, uh, who don't, don't know too much about the shingle model, uh, they might think of it as another tool like uh, Lean or Six Sigma, for example. And the shingle model is not a tool, but rather a philosophy. It's a philosophy uh, that comes out of uh, the Shingle Institute that had developed it uh, back in the 1980s. And the purpose of the Shingle Institute is to uh, use these timeless principles and to shape cultures and drive organizational and operational excellence within organizations. And the mission is to improve um, the processes by continuously improving the model through research and of course, other types of insightful information that is uh, globally being practiced by practitioners of Lean, Six Sigma and Shingo worldwide. So how did the Shingo uh, model uh, and prize come about? Well, it came out in honor of Shiego Shingo. Uh, and he had uh, written uh, over 20 books of, of lean and, and the Toyota production systems and so forth. And you'll see these books that were then translated into English. 
And the Shingle Institute uh, back in the late 80s, gave him an, 1988, gave him an honorary doctorate for all of his work. And that's how the Shingle Institute was uh, developed and born, and the prize was developed. The first prize was uh, created back in 1988. And that prize, uh, uh, the version of the prize, uh, many people uh, applied for that and, and was able to qualify for the Shingle Prize. It's a very a rigorous process to go and, 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 and get the award of a shingle prize uh, because it's not looking at any type of silo operation or just covering any type of uh, department per se. It's really looking at the organization and the people within the organization, which is very, very key on this. Um, and the shingle prize, of course, back in 2000, won the Nobel Prize for Manufacturing. So it is a very well-known global prize. If you notice it here, we can see where the shingle model and the shingle prize and recipients are well-known throughout the world. Now, uh, you'll be surprised, you'll say, well, we heard about it here in the US. Um, where is the shingle prize mostly uh, used or known? Well, uh, you'll be surprised that uh, one of the countries that uses the Shingle Prize a lot is Mexico and Panama uh, and Costa Rica. Uh, these are the countries that are really pushing for the Shingle Prize, mostly because the uh, companies that are, are applying have their base in the U.S. and they're using the subsidiary con uh, country uh, plants to apply for the Shingle Prize, which is much more controlled environment, which is very, very good. Uh, but it's worldwide known, and our company, uh, the Guiding Principles, has now taken this to parts of South America. We now cover Colombia, uh, uh, Peru, uh, Chile, and other parts of Latin America, including Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. And we're taking it to other parts of the world as well. So that's why we are uh, a global uh, affiliate of the Shingle Prize, and we also uh, do training in Spanish, English, and in Portuguese. So we have uh, developed a simple poll here that uh, we'd like to uh, share with everyone that's online. And we know that many, many companies are in this lean journey and, and have taken up uh, many times again and again the process of operational and organizational excellence. But what uh, the Shingle Re Institute has noticed um, a common uh, 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 trend is that after about two and a half years of this lean journey, of this journey towards excellence and continuous improvement, um, the initiatives pretty much drop off and they drop off pretty drastically uh, in the sense that literally entire departments are eliminated. For example, they might have a continuous improvement department or process excellence group, et cetera. And, and, and many companies have just eliminated the whole process and dropped off the, all of the initiatives. And they'll have a couple of black belts or a couple of people that lean to still work on some mini projects like in silo departments. But really the initiative, the focus, the goal has been really taken out of focus. So the question is, why? Why does this happen in many companies? So we have a poll that um, Tracy will be yes. leading, and we capture yep. information. And the three questions are, uh, the, 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 the options are, is it because of lack of funding, lack of resources, leadership changes, all of the above, or none of the above? What do you think? Yes, we have some, some answers coming in already, and so far... Uh, three and four are what people are saying. Three is uh, probably the leader, leadership changes. And a few people have said four, all of the above, lack of funding, lack of resources and leadership changes. Uh, we've had, Mary says, none of the above. Mary, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about what, why you think uh, some of the organizations are stopping after two years. Um, that'd be interesting. Uh, Josh says too, lack of resources. And Kelly says also leadership changes. Very good. Uh, Very good. And I like the results that we're receiving now. But what, And the results are showing what 
are common causes, right? What people uh, pretty much think or feel what's going on with regards to their initiatives. And, and, the, and the correct answer is really all of the above, right? Uh -huh. uh, many people, um, they say there's the lack of funding or lack of resources, but sometimes they have the resources and sometimes the funding is not really a problem because remember, these groups that are process excellence and continuous improvement are cost savings groups, right? They provide, their goal is to save money. Their goal is to bring back money into the organization. So they're not really absorbing costs. They're really contributing to the cost savings of an organization. So it really can't be funding reasons because they pretty much pay for themselves of all the initiatives and cost savings initiatives that they uh, execute. But leadership is the key. That is the key. And sometimes you'll have a good leader that has a good initiative focus on getting these things done. But once that person leaves or changes, then the initiatives pretty much drop off. So all of the answers were great and they were all right on the money. Exactly. That's what we want to see what is going on. So the question is, you know, why do we see these common situations? You know, where, where are these organizations headed? What are the challenges that they face today? So today, many organizations have tools and results. What they have, they're really focused on getting um, uh, uh, the performance uh, uh, initiatives, uh, uh, the, the performance uh, PMIs, and, and, and trying to really get that uh, 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 information on how they're performing. Uh, and they focus very on tools, right? On these lean tools, let it be 5S or 8 Waste. And they just really focus on, on, on getting these KPIs. And, um, and is that the uh, right way to approach this? Um, another thing is that uh, they'll push uh, the organizations to use these tools, so it's not really something that people are either used to or are really wanting to use. It's something that from top down, it's, it's pushing them to get these KPIs out and the pressure to get it done um, creates uh, this type of gap. So what happens is you'll have this bridge and trying to get to the other side, what you have is unsustainable programs. You'll have people that have, uh, they're focused on KPIs, they're using tools, but they're still not reaching that organizational excellence mark. So how do we close the gap? How do we get good results and get sustainable results? That is the key here that is very different from just um, uh, having initiatives that are based on tools alone and just focusing on KPIs alone. So what is, what is the bridge uh, that will close this gap? And that is having principles, behaviors, and systems. Now the principles align the systems to drive the behavior. And principles, uh, we'll learn a little bit more about principles, but what they do is provide the framework so that uh, the organization now has a direction on where it's going to. At the same time, you have behaviors that are addressing the systems issues that are uh, are going to be uh, addressed so they could fix those problems. So systems are what closes the gap between the tools and the results. And these are the systems that are driving uh, the behaviors within the organization. So if you have bad systems, you will also have behaviors associated with that, which are not ideal. And these are the terminologies that uh, the Shingle, is used, Shingle Institute uses a lot. Ideal situations and non-ideal situations. So when you have systems that are not ideal, then you have behaviors that are not ideal. For example, you know, let's say you have a system where people have to manually enter things from Excel and then enter into a legacy system. And that drives a behavior of what? Of rework or of batch and queue processing of uh, prone to errors and prone to uh, a lot of other problems that because it's now not really a flow system or like in the Toyota production system where we have a uh, continuous flow. We have now uh, an area where we'll have problems of errors and problems. So principles 
help provide us now alignment so that now we understand uh, how to manage uh, these systems and be able to address them accordingly and address the behaviors associated with them. Now, who builds the systems and tools? Now, this is very key important. Now, this is part of only half of the, of the shingle model of how it looks like. And the question in the middle is, who builds these systems and tools? Now, you would think system and tools, well, perhaps uh, when people think about systems, they think of IT systems, right? Or they think of application systems. Um, and this is not really talking about any type of technology. It's really the systems that are driving the business today. And the tools, when we talk about tools, people think about Lean, or they may talk about Six Sigma, but tools really come into other categories as well. And we'll go into what the systems and tools really represent. But the question is, who builds them? The answer is the executive managers and members of the teams. They're the ones who are responsible for the systems. And they all influence the culture in the same way. So in, 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 in various ways, uh, the executives are responsible for uh, uh, over the groups and the teams, right? They're the ones who are the executive overview of providing that focus and that vision of where the systems should be. Managers now, middle management, directors and VPs and so forth, are the ones that drive these systems um, through down to the uh, team members and to the colleagues and the, the frontline employees. So uh, they have the influence over the culture and they are the most uh, the important drivers of how the culture is going to work. If you notice in the model, you'll see here how the, uh, the, bit, the middle part here, which is the culture, which is driven by executive managers and teams are interacting with systems, tools, and results. And again, when we talk about systems and tools, uh, we'll explain a little bit more what they mean, but we're not talking about applications or IT, and we're not talking about Lean or Six Sigma, but we're talking about uh, how they interactively work together to provide the results. And results not only on KPIs, but also what's called KBIs, or Key Behavior Indicators. So the culture, what is culture? Well, culture are values, beliefs, and behaviors. And as Ed, uh, Edgar Schein uh, mentioned, uh, the only thing of real importance that leaders do is to create and manage culture. If they do not manage culture, it manages you. And you may not even be aware of the extent of which this is happening. And that's why if you look at the model, the centerpiece of the shingle model is the culture and the behaviors associated with that culture. And that's why... Uh, the shingle model is not based on a tool or anything else. It's really a philosophy of culture, of how culture can, should be uh, uh, driven uh, to provide systems, tools, and results within the organization. But these things also uh, provide, are based on principles, which we'll go into a little bit later on. Since we talked about culture and behaviors, we have a little simple exercise that we'd like to invite everyone that's on the call, on this webinar, to um, participate. And if you're looking at an organization and you observe these behaviors, so the question is, uh, what is the behavior evidence you would observe if the culture exhibits the following attributes? So we'll give you time to enter into the chat. And if you look at each one of these attributes, power, hungry, fear, survival, firefighting, humility, innovation, respect, trust, and collaboration. What are the behavioral evidence that you will observe when people exhibit these type of attributes? Unfortunately, I have seen some of this in some organizations I have worked in is power hungry or operating on fear. Um, I've heard the harshest environment ever worked in and some of the cultures I've seen, it's, it's unfortunate. So Jared says backstabbing, firefighting, burnout and avoidance, blaming, backbiting, controlling. So yeah, these are definitely things we might observe uh, in the culture by the people, right? So our siloed culture, who wins first is what Angela has said. Um, 
Craig says rewarding those who fix things regularly. So there's more firefighting, right? So wanting to be the hero and sometimes, and I've even seen people create fires so they can put them out. So they look good. <laughs> like, wow. Uh, the hero syndrome is what Angela says. So if you notice that, that um, these uh, uh, attributes that, uh, and, and, and evidence of behavior that people have mentioned have nothing to do with the tools of lean or six Sigma. That's why the, the shingle model is really based on a philosophy of how to change and transform the culture, how to evolutionize and revolutionize the culture so that the behaviors of that culture are ideal. And obviously, some of the things that are here are non-ideal. For example, the power hungry and the fear and survival uh, and firefighting, these are not an ideal cultures, but these are the cultures that are uh, exhibited today. And many of the reasons why Many of the organizations are not continuing now anymore with these lean initiatives or these organization improvement initiatives. But no one mentioned the other attributes like humility, innovation, respect, trust, and collaboration. What type of evidence or behaviors do those attributes uh, exhibit? What about some of the positive aspects of culture where people have humility, where in innovation is encouraged, where respect and trust is promoted and collaboration. What kinds of behaviors does that generate? Ownership, a family environment, teamwork, good. A learning culture, Kathy says, very nice. Um, authentic conversations, people helping each other, Kelly says, very nice. Um, common goals and sharing of rewards, Craig says. Uh, respect. Thanking people for good work, challenges that are dealt with in a mutual interest fashion. Yes, yes. And thanks for those, thanks for those responses. They are all great responses. And that's exactly what the shingle model is about, you know, is all about. It's, it's promoting these type of ideal behaviors and creating an ideal environment where you'll have employees that have this type of of uh, attributes. And it's top, it starts with the top from leadership, which is the ones that define the culture and de define the behaviors. And it comes down all the way down and it replicates all the way down to the frontline employees. Have you ever heard the, the, the expression, well, uh, he's not a good fit for our business, or she's not a good fit? What does that mean? Does that mean that um, the people have to fit into your culture? Or is it the culture flexible enough where people can work and have this uh, humility, respect, trust, and collaboration. Um, so that's why um, it's very important to think about these types of questions when uh, people talk about cultures or talk about, you know, fitting into a culture and what is the behaviors attributes of, the, of that. There are three insights to organizational excellence based on the, on the, the Shingle Institute's um, research. The first insight is that ideal results require ideal behaviors. So as everyone just mentioned, right, um, the bad behaviors don't create ideal results. Now, can you get results with bad behavior? Of course, people have been doing that for centuries, right? Uh, the, the whip and the, and the chain, you know, gets results. But is that ideal? Is that the way you want to run your business or you want your business to be known as uh, one of those uh, whipping companies, right? That, that whip you into shape and get the results done. Get it done today. Uh, no matter what it takes, just get it done. Well, ideal results are outcomes that are aligned to both excellent and sustainable and which demonstrate improvement over time. Ideal behaviors are actions that create outcomes that produce results and they're both excellent and sustainable. So you want um, to have ideal behaviors because now you have sustainability. Now people want to do things at the, at the excellence level. Now you have ideal results, but now you have a, a way of getting there. Now the, because of the behaviors have changed. So this is the insight number one. Insight number two is that the purpose and systems drive behaviors. So what is the purpose? Uh, most of the systems that guide the way people work are designed to create a specific business result 
without regards for the behavior that the system consequently drives. To drive ideal behavior, management needs to improve the three essential systems, which we will go into right now, which will achieve these business results. What are the three essential systems? They are management systems, work systems, and improvement systems. Now, management systems is pretty self-explanatory, right? It's leadership systems, how leadership leads and creates an environment uh, of management. Well, you have your KPIs, of course, and you have your KBIs, which are your indicators for behaviors. But they're also developing um, uh, systems that will be able to be sustainable throughout the organization. Now, your work system is where the work is being done, exactly at the, at, the, at the gemba, if you will, right? So that's where you have your workflow, and that's where your systems are at as well. These are, this is another part of the essential system. And your improvement system, here's where you have now all of your tools coming into work and having now an organization to be better. Now you're having improvement systems that make sure that you are on that journey of continuous improvement. All of these three key components work interactively and work together. And what organizations have today, or what they've done today, is pretty much have this separately. You'll have your management having deciding what they want to do. You have your work system as a silo, right? And working a lot independently and trying to figure out things out on a daily basis. And then you have your improvement system, which try to go into both work and management and trying to figure out, you know, these these problems and try to make some improvements on them. That's where you have the silo situation, right? You have the silo processes, the silo projects, and sometimes they succeed and sometimes they don't. But sometimes what the, the biggest problem is that they're not sustainable. But when they work together, now you have an essential system that is interactively working with management your, and your Gemba system, your work system, and your improvement system. Now, what are the results of these systems? Well, the tools that are used are standard work, reporting, feedback, scheduling, and improvement logs. These are just parts of the tools that are communications that are used within the systems, okay? And when you go into, when, when you get into um, your single training and get the certification, um, there's each one of these uh, triangles that you see are all modular trainings within the Shingle uh, uh, Institute's uh, training program. And it goes into much more depth of what these, uh, what this represents and what does this mean. So we're just going very high level of, of how the systems and tools work together. If you notice that we then talk about lean tools per se, you know, like eight ways to five S or A3s or anything like that, because this is not really about that. This is really about an organization working together, using the tools and using the behaviors and the culture together to getting an ideal result. What's the third insight? Principles inform ideal behaviors. And principles are foundation because they govern consequences and they are something that people can understand clearly. There are, they drive ideal behaviors. And principles uh, are, are forever. They, you know, when you treat someone with respect, there's no, there's no uh, ifs and or qu or questions about what does that mean, right? You treat someone with respect means treat someone with respect. When uh, you're going to lead with humility, what does that mean? Well, you lead with humility. There's no other uh, uh, a different type of uh, explanation or uh, a, a way of explaining that. That's what principles are all about. And we're going to go into now what the principles of the shingle model look like. And here is the shingle model in its full form. And you'll see that you have the guiding principles on the top, which are uh, the top of the triangle. These are aligned uh, with the systems. The systems uh, then <clears throat> have the tools that are selected and enable the, the, the systems to work with the tools. The tools provide results. As we mentioned before, we showed some of the results. We had some reporting tools there and some communication tools. And the results affirm uh, the guiding principles 
as the model, as a framework for moving forward. And uh, as Edgar Chines mentioned here, the only thing of real importance that leaders do is to create and manage culture. If they do not manage culture, it manages you. At the center is the culture. So these um, different uh, components of the Shingo model, you notice that culture is in the center, is the heart. That's how we drive culture and behavior. And at the top of the triangle is where we have the principles, the guiding principles. And Shingo has 10 guiding principles. The guiding principles that are uh, that our Shingo has here are listed as here, one through 10, and we'll go over uh, what they mean. Uh, but they're divided into three components, purpose, process, and people. And, and on the purpose side, you have the enterprise alignment, how's aligned, those principles are aligned, continuous improvement process in the process uh, section, and you have cultural enablers. And these are the principles that are uh, uh, based out of the Shingo model. So you have respect for every individual, lead with humility, seek perfection, embrace scientific thinking, focus on the process, assure quality at the source, follow and, and pull a value, think systemically, create consistency of purpose, and create value for the customer. Now, how do these principles fit into this model? Well, we'll go into that right now. If you notice it here, the first uh, uh, three on under enterprise alignment, it goes create value for a customer, create consistency, and think systematically. But the foundation of the Shingo model is down here, which is cultural enablers. Now, why is this the foundation? And why is this so important? First of all, these are the, the keystones for having success within the Shingo model. In other words, if you don't change the culture, you can't get the ideal results. And the first two principles to change the culture is the base, which is respect for every individual and leading with humility. Now, this is much more harder than what it looks. It's harder to have or make people change. Well, you can't make people change, but have them change on their own. You, it's, you can't make behavior change. The only thing you could do is guide the culture and provide ideal uh, environment where then behaviors will change. And the first level to do that is by creating an environment where people have respect for every individual and they're leading with humility. Now, as we go up uh, up the, 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 the pyramid, you notice here that the second uh, 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 important thing to do is have this continuous improvement journey as uh, with through assuring quality at the source, improving flow and pull, seek perfection, embrace scientific thinking, and focus on the process. And here's where we have a lot of interaction with different tools and techniques and, and, and processes that help us have this continuous improvement uh, flow within our organization. But what is very important is that the enterprise needs to be aligned as the top of the pyramid mentions here, enterprise alignment, and this is the leadership side of it as well, where you create value, create constancy of purpose and think systematically. Constancy of purpose is one of the key uh, principles within the, sh the shingle model. Why? Because now you're now, you're, you're focused on a long-term journey versus trying to get a quick result within the first few years of your lean or your shingle uh, journey. Uh, people will get frustrated after a year or two. They say, this is too hard. This just takes too much, too much time, uh, too many resources. And it's, I have to admit, it is not easy. And uh, not everyone has able to you know reach this goal because it takes it takes time, and changing and transforming a culture, uh, I call it evolution of a, of a culture, takes time. People have to feel comfortable. They have to feel that they are now within an environment that is ideal, and now that their ideas are, are shared, they can also express uh, how they feel. Uh, there also is that open communication. There's that humility. Uh, uh, aspect as well, and there's that respect for every individual that leaders have with 
all levels within the organization. And when, when that happens, then the chain reaction is much more transparent and a lot of these other things become easier to accomplish. So let's take this a little bit, break this down a little bit more, to understand it. First of all, what does it mean to have respect for individual and legal humility? Well, first, it means to assure a safe environment, to develop people, empower and involve everyone, and it includes a whole list of other things as well, like you had mentioned in the polls before. Um, having that trust and having that ability to be able to communicate with others and not feel that your position or your comments or anything is a threat. That in other words, well, will I, you know, get into trouble if I do this, if I try this, or if I speak up, or if I make a change, or et cetera. Uh, that should not ex happen. That problem should not exist when you have that respect for every individual. Leadership um, needs to take the initiative and say, come and give us your opinion. Come and give us, let us know what it is that you see <clears throat> and how we can be better. And that's where leadership steps in and provides that guidance. In the next level we have here, the continuous improvement principle, we have uh, what is gonna create that ideal environment where you have a stabilized process. You have stable, you have a standard work. You're at the Gemba, of course, going to, and observing in the Gemba. You're focusing on the value stream, focusing on the process, on the flow. Um, you can have a lot of visual management and you're keeping it simple. You're identifying eliminating waste continuously, which is very, very important, okay? Um, no defects pass uh, and are forwarded. So you have a, a, a pokey yoke system where defects are captured at the process level. And you have integrated improvement with work. So you're not working in silos anymore. You're working now with cross-functional organizations. Now you're working with cross-functional leaders and cross-functional departments. And you're working together with the same goal. You have now an alignment uh, with the different teams and you're all focused on the same thing and the same getting out the quality as everyone else wants to right at the expectation of the customers of the customers expectations and you're using data and facts to validate uh, what you're working on so it's not you know the finger in the sky it's really um, using information intelligently that provides this continuous improvement program and using it more on a pull system versus a push system, right? You're not forcing on them. People are now coming to you because now they want to see, they've seen the improvements in other areas. Now they want to have improvements in their areas. The top of the pyramid, where we have enterprise alignment, it's very key because now you're seeing the reality of these principles in, in action. And um, you're, it's, you're, you'll notice that, it, as it mentions down here, you're focused on the long term. This is not a... Uh, a two, three, or four year initiative. As a matter of fact, to even qualify for the shingle prize, you have to be on the shingle journey for a minimum of about three years. So if it takes three years just to get your baseline for the shingle prize, how long do you think it'll take you to get to qualify to become a shingle prize winner? It takes some time. Of course, some people have accomplished it after four years or five years, and after even three years, they've accomplished it. Uh, and there's different prizes, there's different shingle awards uh, that are go to that. There's, there's the bronze, the silver, and of course, the, the main shingle prize. But just getting that baseline uh, in place and seeing results can take up to three years in initiative, initially. Now, aligning uh, uh, the enterprise also means aligning behaviors with the performance, uh, having policies in place, uh, having standardized uh, daily, uh, daily management uh, uh, boards, uh, measuring what really matters, identifying really who the customers is and identifying cause and effect relationships. So we're now thinking systemically across the enterprise. We're thinking now of value to the, for the customer we're not just thinking about processes per se. We're now we're thinking about the organization 
entirely. And we're also working with interdepartments, cross-functional people as well. And we're all focused on the exact same thing. Constancy of purpose is having that vision and saying, we're going to be on this journey for as long as it takes. You know, it, it's not saying we're going to try it for a little while and see what happens. Constancy means being consistent, being consistent with your messaging, being consistent with your vision, and being consistent with your goal. And the goal here is not just apart from perhaps wanting to uh, be a shingle prize recipient, that might be a goal, but really looking at it at the enterprise level, it's really of acquiring excellence operationally. It's really getting that organization uh, at a level of excellence. And that should be the real vision and goal for the, as a purpose. Shiego Shingo had mentioned this. He said, improvement means the elimination of waste. And the most essential precondition for improvement is the proper pursuit of goals. And like we just mentioned just now, we must not be mistaken for, first of all, about what improvement means, how thoroughly we pursue goals, is affected by the quality of our improvement plans. And the quality of our improvement plans is important by having our consistency of our purpose. Um, and that's, those, these are the, the, the key aspects of the shingle model that we just went through and how the principles are aligned to provide that uh, framework. So you have the consistency of purpose in the ideal conditions for ideal behaviors, an ideal culture, and an ideal results. Here are the different uh, shingle training modules that the Shingle Institute provides. There are six modules and they're mostly all two-day training programs um, and only continuous improvement is, is, is three days because it's, it's much more in-depth. Basically how the training works is in the morning you have uh, the theory uh, 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 portion of the training and then in the afternoon you go to the Gemba and you apply what you've learned and you work with the, um, the host site that provides uh, an opportunity to tour the plant, uh, interview a few people and understand what's going on and identify it. That's where you identify the different areas and aspects that you are covering under that training. So if you're covering systems, you'll be covering them. You're just reviewing systems. If you, go, if, you, if you are in continuous improvement, you're looking at the continuous improvement initiatives etc. Um, and they're all uh, great training programs. Once you have completed all six training uh, curriculums, then you qualify to be part of the Shingle Alumni, which is a, a very unique group uh, that the Shingle Institute provides you with this logo. Uh, I am a Shingle alumni myself, and I'm also a Shingle uh, a trainer. Uh, I provide training of all of these modules. Um, and an affiliate of the shingle. So our company is, is uh, licensed to provide uh, shingle training. And uh, what, how, does, how does the shingle alumni program works? Well, at every year when the Shingle Institute has its conferences, uh, you're recognized at the, uh, at the shingle conference uh, uh, with the Duna Gala Award. You know, your name is mentioned there. Um, you get a packet, a, le a, a letter, from the Shingle Institute, and you get this uh, logo to be able to put on your business cards or anywhere else that you like to have it on there as a recognition of completing all of the Shingle uh, training. You also get discounts for this, the, the conferences and the summits. Um, your company name and your your position will also be on the company on the uh, on the Shingle Institute's website. Uh, if you go to shingle.org. Uh, you can find my name there, the guiding principles, and you'll see alumni and uh, other people who are there as well. You'll see their, their names as well. And um, you get this graphic, like I mentioned before, which you can put on your email signatures or in your business cards. So what is it that we, the guiding principles, are promoting today? Well, first of all, what we're looking for is host sites since um, after the covid uh, uh, pandemic occurred. Um, everybody has been in shutdown and people have been working from their home offices. And uh, now companies are beginning to open up their doors again. Host sites are important because this is where 
we conduct the training. Uh, a whole site opens its doors and allows us uh, to come in. There's two forms of training. We provide virtual training and on-site training. And um, on-site training is very important because it provides a real visual effect when you go to the Gemba and you can actually interview the employees and you could see the work that's being done. Um, if those companies are still uh, have their doors closed to the outside, you know, to the public, um, we have virtual training as well. What we're looking for as the guiding principles are companies are in healthcare, manufacturing, services, nonprofit organizations or insurance companies that can uh, be a host site. There is no cost. As a matter of fact, as a host site for every five people that uh, sign up for the training, uh, one person gets to go to the workshop for free. Also this year, uh, the Shingle Institute, this is a Shingle certified training. This is, uh, this is sponsored by the Shingle Institute. You get a Shingle Institute uh, certificate of completion of training. So it's through the Shingle Institute. Um, we're, we're promoting now the, the first class, which is called Discover Excellence uh, for uh, either virtual or on-site. Uh, just for the, those who attended the, just, uh, the JT Cafe for only uh, $1,300. Uh, so we'll round it off here uh, per person. And then again, um, this is either virtual or on site. Preferably, I would love to be on site again. We haven't been on site for a year, but um, uh, we're looking for those companies who are beginning to open the doors. And of course, safety is important. And those who continue with the safety uh, masks and, and so forth are allowing to do that. Um, what we're providing uh, as a company uh, for those who attended this 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 uh, this webinar is a four hour four hour virtual uh, assessment for free of your organization. So I will uh, we'll have a, a LinkedIn we'll have a I'm sorry we'll have a Zoom meeting and we'll go into your organization and uh, assess your organization how it's its journey and lean and towards organizational excellence. And uh, as I'm also an, an examiner for the Shingle Institute um, and uh, working on uh, getting some more uh, clients that we, uh, uh, who will qualify and apply for the uh, Shingle Award. Uh, and this is part of the process where we come in and we ask some basic questions on how is the journey going and the different areas that we'll go and ask some questions on. And um, usually, uh, some outside people, they, they charge for this. We're doing this for free for four hours for those who attended the JAT conf conference. And um, this same, uh, a much more in-depth uh, webinar is being also offered for two hours on the shingle model uh, for organizations that have and want to invite their leadership or want to have it in-house for their organization. And there's no limit on how many people can attend on that. So if your company says, you know, we want to hear more about the shingle model, uh, more in depth, more details, how to benefit us. Um, welcome to do that. And we will provide that uh, free webinar uh, and go into depth and answer more questions on the training and the certifications. And of course, the model, the principles and everything else. So um, the training can be either in English, Spanish or Portuguese. And um, wherever you're located, I know you're in different countries, parts of the world. We're available to give them in those three languages. And um, whenever uh, your whole site is available and wants to do that. That sounds great, Carlos. Thank you so much. Very, very informative. Um, go ahead and we'll go ahead and open it up to see if anyone has questions. I do have a few questions teed up for you already, Carlos, from a few people. But while we're waiting for questions to come into the chat window, why don't we go through a couple of upcoming events. May 6th at 11 a.m., we're uh, featuring Jim Athon from 11 to 12 p.m. Pacific. His title webinar is called How to Pick the Right Lean Six Sigma Map and Build It. And so obviously continuous improvement offers many ways to map out processes, plans, systems, but you may be unclear on which one to use and when to use it. When does a macro process flow help? And can you add a timeline to swim lane maps? Would color coding help? All of those things. So top-notch instructor and Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt, Jim Athan is gonna be walking us through those real examples of key mapping options. So join us for that webinar coming up. 
So we got a chance to interview the very large nonprofit here in San Diego, the San Diego Humane Society. They care for people and animals. They talked about their culture of care on our podcast. I got to interview Audrey Lang and Tina Wynn. Audrey is the Senior Vice President of Organizational Development. Tina Wynn is the Vice President of Employee Engagement. And Elizabeth and I had a great chat with them. Definitely check out the podcast. They take care of over 50,000 animals in San Diego. And it's really fun to hear how they're applying process improvement to the kitten nursery. So check that out. And then one other announcement, Um, my colleague, my fabulous colleague, Elizabeth Swan, has a brand new workshop. We just launched it June 16th, and it's called In the Moment using improv as a people skill. So if you find yourself stymied in the moment, stuck in old thinking habits, are you looking to foster better relationships? Well, improv is problem solving on stage. Yes, and, and other tenets of improv can provide you with tools to bring more authenticity to your interactions. So you wanna join this live workshop. I got to participate in the first one And it was awesome. So you don't want to miss that coming up. Definitely register for that. Okay, so let's see if we have some more. And so we have a couple of uh, the improv workshop sign up is in the chat and our podcast link. So thank you for putting those in. And let's see what kinds of questions we have for Carlos. Terry had a great question for you, Carlos. Uh, wants to know, how does the shingle model compare to the Baldridge model of organizational excellence? And when should you use each one? Can you speak? You've probably had this question before. And so we'd love to hear maybe a little feedback on the differences. Yes. Well, the, the Baldridge uh, Award is more of a national award for uh, excellence uh, developed here in the U.S., uh, the Shingle uh, Prize is a global award uh, and is recognized, you know, internationally. Um, and sometimes um, a lot of the Baldrige Award is based on policies and procedures and so forth. The Shingle model is really going into uh, cultural and behavior changes. So many people who have won the Baldrige Award not necessarily can win the Shingle Award because the behavior changes and culture changes haven't really taken place. They have the policies in place. They'll have all the other excellence uh, which has with regards to uh, measurements and other types of uh, um, procedures in place to uh, capture quality and capture excellence. But when it comes to the people, uh, it comes to the front line and leadership and that vision and that unity that we mentioned before of the ideal behaviors and ideal attributes, many times it's not there. Uh, That's why the Shingo model is very unique because it really requires a cultural change, a culture change in behaviors um, and how we treat everyone within the organization. So it's not really about collecting or building policies or standard work. It's really about applying the principles um, and uh, using uh, uh, the systems, tools, and results uh, to create that ideal culture and behavior. Um, The other question that came up, I'm not sure if this is enough information for you to answer it, but how best to implement a target operating model for a digital transformation program for like a new online product? Does that, um, are you familiar with target operating models and maybe some suggestions on how to implement that? Well, I'm not familiar with the target operating model. I am familiar with the, with the digital uh, processes now, when, for example, using robotic process automation. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, those are the things that we're using today. And again, that's a tool, right? Mm-hmm. And we, 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 we mentioned that there's a, a difference between the tools, right, that are and, and where they fall under and how the model encapsulates uh, the principles. So uh, all of these tools that are out there that contribute to, uh, in, to improvements and continuous improvement and to elimination of waste and also elimination of rework and capturing errors uh, uh, and also uh, facilitating work that be more error proof, 
like bots do, for example, um, are excellent tools. But remember, if we looked at the shingle model, there's more components to the shingle model than just the tools, right? We need to have all of the components working together in unison to build that culture and the ideal environment to have excellence. Wonderful. A couple of questions based on the shingle model and your experience, what, which of those segments, uh, enterprise alignment, continuous improvement, culture, which one do you see organizations struggle with the most? Cultural mm -hmm. enablers. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, it requires people to change their attitude. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, to respect for everybody and leading with humility is not easy. You know, people mistake leading with humility with, you know, getting away with doing things that are wrong or um, respect for an individual. They may think of that they make them look weak, for example, because they're showing, you know, more flexibility and more openness towards uh, accepting other types of opinions and, and feedback from people. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, right, this is opening the doors towards excellence because the real knowledge of excellence is on it's on the floor, right? Where the people at the Gemba, where people are doing the work. That's where the knowledge is at when it comes to knowing what is needed within the organization to reaching the organizational goals. Leadership is, of course, doing its job as leading the vision, leading the mission, and of course, expanding the business and so forth like that. But how it, how it all um, comes together is having uh, the organizations be able to work together and, and to transform. I've been working for a year in uh, Colombia in a hospital, and what we've been focus on, focusing on is on the transformation of uh, the organization. And the first things that we're working on was leading with humility and respect for the individual. And that has taken us a year so far in reaching that cultural change because it requires people to change their attitudes and their behaviors and creating ideal conditions. So we're not dealing any, with, with eliminating all the political infighting, eliminating a lot of the things that, that are not ideal. And we're opening up the doors for more humility, more acceptance and more open communication and more willingness uh, to uh, accept other people's opinions and ideas. And it's been an uphill battle, especially working in another country, doing this virtually and mm -hmm. trying to change a culture that has a very uh, uh, rigid uh, political uh, system, you know, with a very hierarchy, old fashioned, I, I call it the 1940s hierarchy where the boss is the boss and no one questions the boss and everybody calls him boss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Right? Uh, yes. Uh, an environment where everybody can say, we're co-workers, we're collaborators, we're, we're, we're we work together, we're a team. Let me know what I can do for you, what can you do for me, what my ideas are and what your ideas are and work together. Yes. Well, thank you, Carlos, for coming to the cafe and sharing your knowledge. I could, I probably could get ask you a, five questions just of my own, uh, but we're out of time now. So I want to thank you so much for coming to the cafe and I hope you all enjoyed Carlos's presentation and we look forward to hearing more about the Shingo model in the future. Bye everyone.